On the vibrant shores of Waikiki Beach, you're about to face a serious showdown against the formidable Merkers shortly after your arrival. As the main character, staying alert is the name of the game. Embrace the light and fight your battles where it shines. These Merkers thrive on shadows, gaining strength from them, growing in size and power. The difference is reminiscent of the slug terror slugs that go from normal to ghouls within in an instant. The smart move here is to position yourself under the bright sunlight, enveloping you and your opponents in its glow. But that being said, keep in mind that some power-ups can even make darkness your ally, working in your favor, in the shadows of your actions. While you're in the game, you'll find chests hidden around that cause the light to open, which can be gained by busting capsules, defeating murkers, and completing side missions spread throughout. It's like gathering supplies in survival games before sunset, but in this game, the sun's literally on a timer, and the bosses prove that scary things really do lurk in the dark. The items acquired from chests range from explosive Iron Man jumps, greater damage in close encounters, greater damage when standing still, which is extremely pointless, may I add. Ice grenades, turret drones with elemental abilities, imbuing your weapon with elemental damage, the list goes on. I found myself disappointed in many of them, and their usefulness wasn't as practical as their effects may imply. As Merkers fall in battle, you have the chance to gather the grossly named mucus they leave behind, a unique currency that fuels your progression. You have to store it within a mucus bank in the levels or you'll risk losing a lot of it whenever you die. Be careful though, you can only store it once per level. You then use your mucus reserve back at your apartment to enhance your abilities through leveling trees, ensuring your attack, health, shield, light, and equipment escalate with every run, depending on the amount of mucus acquired, of course. While an initial semblance of enjoyment does emanate throughout the game, rich with replayable moments and an enticing loop of trial error and growth, or at least, <laughs> that's what it seems like it will have, the subsequent experience does descend into a monotonous grind. That is due, most likely due to prolonged play exposing those big shortcomings that mar the otherwise promising landscape. For instance, whenever you die, that could most likely be attributed to unfair enemy mechanics at times and that... <laughs> That materializes with an aggravating frequency. The enemy's uncanny ability to fire through obstacles from beyond what I was able to see made cover mute at times and added to my frustration. Variability in attack cues amplifies the disparity in certain scenarios, impinging upon the fundamental mechanics and making attacks from off screen feel cheap. Even if they aren't shooting through their nest to hit me, which... <laughs> They do, quite a bit. Control over sensitivity, a fundamental aspect of gameplay precision, feels half-baked. The absence of separate sensitivity sliders for aiming down the sights and hip firing constrains gameplay customization. Instances of glitches triggering unexpected falls through solid objects further erode the immersive experience. The ethereal quality of character movement paradoxically coupled with success ability to fall damage disrupts the flow of combat and exploration in its entirety. I sadly have a critique concerning the story even, or well, <laughs> lack thereof as well. The allure of roguelike randomization intended to infuse some semblance of novelty registers as a mere whisper within the cacophony of gameplay, barely discernible in its impact. It doesn't feel like it even needed to be a roguelite, and in that end, the genre feels entirely tacked on. I can barely recommend the game, and yet I still can because I did enjoy it at the beginning, but only once it's marked down to $10 or less. It just doesn't hit the mark and feels like something better created as a custom mode on Fortnite than its own full-fledged game. I hate being harsh on games, especially when they have a cheaper price point but I've played many games this year that lived up to their $15 price tag, 
especially since the transition to next generation gaming carries the expectation of refined gameplay, untethered from the crutch of early access considerations. The conspicuous absence of trophies at the time of release compounds the disillusionment, further undermining the fact that it's now released on PC in next gen consoles only. I wouldn't be so hard on this game if it wasn't marketed for next generation consoles, next generation hardware, because there's no reason whatsoever that this wouldn't work on a PS4. There's not a lot of stuff happening, there's not a huge amount of explosions or bright colors or anything demanding for a system whatsoever. I don't understand it at all. It feels like it's just there to say, hey, this is a PS5 game, but it doesn't even feel like it. I really want wanted to enjoy this game. I like the style to a point, I like the idea of it, I like the fact that the enemies are not as menacing as they're made out to be. I think the three characters do play different enough to change the gameplay loop a little bit depending on which one you choose, but there's just so much that doesn't really feel good. It doesn't feel fluid to play, the controls just don't really mesh well together, the sensitivity issues really hurt the flow, the experience in general when it comes to shooting enemies, everything just feels like it needed more time to cook. And they didn't give it that, instead they released it on next-gen consoles. And this is what it was like the day of release. There's just so many issues, so many glitches, so many times where I died unfairly because I just fell through the flipping ground or got shot through a solid obstacle that makes the whole experience feel like, as Shikamaru would put it, a drag. Hopefully they update it, hopefully it gets enough things to fix it and add stuff to it and make it a far better game that makes it so I can say, yes, get this game for $15. But as of right now, there's just no chance of that happening. No chance at all. Wait for a sale if it's something you want to try out. But until then, for more news reviews and whatever we choose, stay tuned to Nerdsfeed. Have a great day. Thank you.